What's up, guys? We are finally back with another betting breakdown, this time for UFC 283. And yes, if you are you can tell by my voice, I'm a little congested. I've been a little sick, but that's not why I missed last week. I was in Mexico for the first time, left the country, and got engaged. So thank you to everybody who uh, sent me some congrats or uh, just showed love in general. Sorry I missed a week, but glad to be back. Um, did enjoy the fights. Did uh, have some, you know, if you come to the stream, you knew I was pretty big on Ige. Um, and, I, and I still made my picks, but, uh, you know, other than Ige, didn't have any money on the fights. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it was, a fun, it was a fun night of fights, but I'm glad to be back. Um, it's been a, a crazy couple weeks after Christmas and then New Year's and then getting engaged and going to Mexico. And, but we are back, so I appreciate you guys and showing all the love. Before we get into it, make sure you leave a like on the video, comment, subscribe, turn your post notifications on. I am glad to be breaking down these fights. We got 15 of them, so I don't want to waste too much time. Let's get right into it. First fight of the night. We got Daniel Marcos taking on Simon Oliveira. And uh, Oliveira coming off that loss to uh, Tony Gravely. Tony just went in there and just absolutely wrestled him the entire time. Uh... It was smart. Tony's a good wrestler. He's good at mixing it up, and uh, you know it was an important win for him. So he did, went in there and did what he had to do. Do I think Daniel Marcos has the wrestling he does? No, but I do think Daniel Marcos can take him down. Uh, will he go in there and use the same like wrestle heavy approach? I don't think so. I think they're gonna mix it up on the feet a good amount. Uh, both guys are a little reckless on the feet. Both guys get a little wild, um, but I do think, uh, especially at that price, man. There's some good value on Marcos. I like him as an underdog. Haven't put any money on him yet. You know, uh, I don't love betting, you know, newcomers, especially, you know, these undefeated guys who haven't really fought a lot of people. I will say I, I really liked his last performance. It was his first fight in three years, and you could tell he's been working. He wasn't just on the couch. He was. He, he definitely made some improvements. Uh, you know, yeah, he got tired, but, you know, uh, fighting at the apex, uh, it was his... It was his debut, and uh, well, not real debut, contender series, but still, you know, um, to fight his first time, uh, you know, in America, outside of his home country, for the UFC, it's, it's a big deal, and you know, three years off, I'm sure he's going to look even better in this one, uh, with less of a layoff, and uh, I'm going to go with the underdog at Daniel Marcos, I think he actually was the favorite on a lot of books when this line opened, but... Um, he is a pretty big underdog now, so I'm gonna take him. Uh, I think he mixed in some takedowns. Um, I'm, I think I'm gonna I am gonna lean Marcos ground and pound. Uh, but you know I, I think playing a prop isn't necessary. Uh, just take him straight. But I, I will take him by TKO. Um, let's move on to Luan Lacerda taking on Cody Stamen. Uh, Stamen. I don't know why I said his name weird because he's an OG. Uh, Lacerda, though, making his debut. Uh, definitely going to have a ton of height and reach on uh, Stamen. But, I mean, Stamen's, well, not a ton of height, but a ton of reach. What is it? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, almost, what, nine nine inches? Uh, but, like I always say, reach is only an advantage if you know how to use it. Lacerda, more of a jiu-jitsu guy. Striking's not terrible, but uh, I don't think it's as good as Stamen. I actually think Stamen has the cleaner striking Especially in the boxing, Lacerda has you know some decent kicks, but um, if you looked at his competition, you know it's not the worst. And, you know I've seen much worse than this, but you know not a lot. I mean he beat Paiva, he choked him, so that was a good win. Um, yeah, other than that, I mean it's not a, not a lot of noticeable names. Uh, Stamen, on the other hand, his big thing is fighting. I mean, look at that three. It, yeah. Oh, he lost three in a row. Yeah. Jimmy Rivera, which was a good fight, close fight. Uh, I actually had a lot of money on Jimmy Rivera in that one. And I'm not even a Stamen hater. It's just, <laughs> I just knew stylistically that was going to be a tough one for Stamen. He kind of similar fighters, but Rivera is just a little bit better. But then Marab and gave him a good fight. Gave Marab a good fight. <coughs> And then Saeed, you know, caught him in a choke. It happens. We saw in Saeed's last fight, the dude's front chokes are nasty. You cannot get locked up in that thing. Uh, went in there against Eddie Wyland, did what he was supposed to do. Uh, 
This fight, I honestly, I just feel like Lacerda, jiu-jitsu jiu specialist. You know I love jiu-jitsu, pro belt in jiu-jitsu. I'm not trying to slander it, but you got to have some takedowns, man. You got to have some wrestling. Or you got to be, you know, learning jiu-jitsu with takedowns heavy. And I haven't liked what I've seen out of Lacerda's wrestling uh, with his takedowns. I have a hard time seeing him being able to take Stamen down. And if Stamen wants to keep it on the feet and just outbox him, I think he totally can. So I'm going to go Stamen, Stamen by decision. He's not a big finisher, but I actually wouldn't be shocked if he got a finish in this one. And I'm not saying that because he just bulldozed Wineland in his last fight. I, I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, I do think there's going to be it's going to be a bit of a levels matchup where, uh, you know, Cody Stamen's going to look good. And I, and I like that they're giving him two back-to-back -back very winnable fights because... This is one of those guys that, you know, I mean, that run of of Jimmy Rivera, Marab Devalishvili, and Saeed Nurmagomedov, that is a tough run. So, it seems like they're kind of paying him back for that. Uh, I'm going to go Cody Stammen by decision. Next up, we got Josie N Nunes taking on Zariah, Zara Farn. Uh, <laughs> I mean, pretty insane to see Jose Nunes. A girl that's 5'2 at 145 as a minus 450 favorite. I mean, I'm going to keep this short and simple. Farron, I mean, yeah, she fought Felicia Spencer, who's solid, and Megan Anderson, who's solid, but those were not, I mean, very bad performance. I mean, shockingly bad to... I mean, I'm, I really don't like the knock fighters. I, I, all right, let me chill out because I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but for the UFC, like, again, this girl's beating up every girl you know in, in your personal life, but this is the UFC, man, and I just feel like I get why she's such a big favorite. Should uh, Jose Nunes be a minus 450 against anybody in the UFC, especially at 145? She really should not. But I do think she's better in every aspect of fighting than Farron. Uh, I'd be pretty surprised if Farron pulled it off. I mean, then again, this is a low-level women's MMA fight. And you know how I feel about betting any, like, you know, anybody with 10 or less fights as a minus 450, let alone at this level, let alone at this level in women's MMA. And it's not a knock and people take that the wrong way. It's just women's MMA hasn't been around as long at the highest level. So it's still playing catch up, and there's some obviously when you're looking at the highest level, you know it's up there. But you know this this fight, it just shouldn't be under the UFC banner. Um, give me Jose Nunez by however she wants. I'm gonna take her probably by TKO, ground and pound. But just don't bet it. Don't don't, don't bet Jose Nunez at minus four fifty. That's just ridiculous. Next up, we got Warley Alves taking on Nicholas Dalby. Shout out to Nicholas Dalby, friends with uh, my jiu-jitsu coach, Eric Bidar. So I am going to be rooting for Nicholas Dalby, but I got to set that aside because, you know, um, Warley Alves has been a tough guy, a tough guy to cap, man. If, you, if you're an MMA better, this is a tough guy. I mean, he's someone who can go out there. I mean, he, he's fought some of the best guys. I mean, uh, got submitted by Randy Brown. Got uh, finished by James Krause. Got knocked out by Jeremiah Wells in his last one. Uh, took, you know, Usman to a decision. But beat Colby Covington. Um, you know, knocked out Sergio Moraes. Knocked out uh, Munir Lezez. When he looks good, he looks good. It's just, you know, he gasses out. You never know. Like, is it, sometimes it looks like he comes in shape. Sometimes it looks like he had about three minutes of gas. Um, I don't know. I mean, this is a tough fight. I gotta say, all due respect, I, I didn't love the last performance from Dalby. I had some money on him, uh, and he made it a little sweaty. I mean, he won the fight clearly. It wasn't. It wasn't a. Uh, you know, it wasn't that close. But Claudio Silva, just a guy that I thought. Dalby should have been able to do a little bit better on the feet. Uh, you know, it, it was close enough to where it was a little sketchy. <coughs> and, I mean, skills-wise, I think Warley Alves is just miles ahead of Claudio Silva. Maybe, like, maybe just not in the jiu-jitsu, but everything else. So much more athletic and explosive and powerful and fast and younger. And 
I mean, neither guy have a good gas tank, but uh, Nicholas Dalby, he's scrappy, like, you know, he's not great anywhere, but he's good everywhere, and, you know, solid wrestling. I think he can take Worley Alves down, but I don't know, man. Uh, this is a really close fight. Really close. And I hate to say it, but I I feel like I got us ever so slightly lean Worley Alves. Um, I don't know, honestly, like, uh, shout out Dalby. I just don't, I, I can't tell. It doesn't seem like he really, like, wants to be in there. I tell, like, I, I think he's, I don't know. You know, I, I just feel like he's at that point where he's kind of flirting with leaving the game and, Maybe I'm off on this. And, you know, I'm not saying this from any, you know, inside knowledge. I just, I don't know. I just feel like he he's not, he hasn't been looking great his last couple performances. And, uh, I mean, obviously Alves has had some tough performances recently too, but I just feel like skills-wise, he's a little, he's ahead. Dalby, just tough, durable typically. And, uh, I mean, yeah, he's been caught, but... I don't know. I just feel like uh, a gun to my head. I got to go Alves, but this is a really uh, just a toss up. Not one I'd be wanting to put my money on, but give me Worley Alves. Um, man, honestly, I mean, I get that that last year, Maya Wells fight, that was tough, but I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I could see him catching Dolby. I could see him catching him and locking up a submission, but uh, I'm going to take Worley Alves. I'm going to take him by TKO, um, but I will be rooting for Dolby. Next up, we got Terrence McKinney taking on Ismail Bonfim. And, uh, man, this is going to be a banger. I can't wait for this fight. This is a certified banger alert for sure. Terrence McKinney, I mean, y'all know by now. Uh, I know y'all on MMA Twitter know. Uh, he's very vocal there. Um, but uh, we've he's actually... <laughs> I had a couple little decent one-liners on some of my tweets, whether for the positive or negative, but he's, he's funny. Uh, some people don't like him. I get it. I mean, uh, people are like, people have their, their shit to say. And when you're, when you act like he does, you're going to rub people, some, some people the wrong way, but you know, in the fight, McKinney, we know what he does by now. He's going to come out like a bat out of hell. Maybe this will be the first fight out of 17 fights where he doesn't do that, where he wants to learn from it. But, you know, um, every other fight, you know, he wants to come out, get you out of there in the first 10 seconds if he can. If three, four minutes pass and you're still there, it typically doesn't go well for him. I mean, Drew Dober, anybody else he'd have had out of there. Uh, Dober able to survive, turn it around, and finish him. <coughs> I mean, uh what all but like one or two of his fights have gone uh have finished inside the distance um no wait every single one of them why was i thinking oh no it's uh i was mixing it up all but like two of his fights have finished inside the first round that's what it was yeah um yeah i mean this guy is just gonna go for bro killer be killed bon Feem, uh i mean i just feel like He's going to have to go through hell to get out of that first couple of minutes. But if he does, I do think he'll take over. Um, I just We haven't seen McKinney able to, like, with, you know, keep up that pace. And a lot of times he doesn't have to. But when he does, you know, we see him fall off. Um, Bob Feem's legit, man. Uh, good prospect. I mean, 27 still has plenty of time. Obviously, both these guys have plenty of time. But, you know... Um, I don't know. I just feel like it, it's all a matter of like if this fight finishes early, it's going to be McKinney. If this fight gets out of that first three, four minutes, it's going to be Bon Um But I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to go with Terrence McKinney. Uh, I know, you know, a lot of people are like this, these Bon Feem brothers, and we're going to be talking about his brother later on. And, I, you know, it's tough to, to bet on a guy like Terrence McKinney because he's going to make it sweaty. He's going to come out and just go balls to the wall. And that's tough at the highest level. But, oh, y'all, and I got to take a dab. First dab of, of um, January, or 2023 betting videos. Cheers. Um, <coughs> if he makes it, if he, if he weathers that first round storm, 
<laughs> bon V will probably take over. But I'm going to say he doesn't. I'm going to say Terrence McKinney gets that first round knockout. Give me Terrence McKinney in the first round via TKO. And let's move on. Next up, we got <laughs> Jailton Almeida taking on Shamil Abdurakimov. Abdurakimov. That one's always a mouthful. And I'm going to keep this short and simple. Almeida is a minus 1,000 favorite. Don't bet it. It's He's still fighting at heavyweight with a guy who's going to have like 40 pounds on him. Shamil's honestly not a pushover. He's on a three-fight losing streak. I don't know what he did to piss off the UFC. I mean, seriously, what is, what is what's going on? What did this guy do? I mean, uh, I can see them mixing in uh, a Derek Lewis. That, that was, okay, that was fine. Chase Sherman, Andre Olowski, Marcin Tiber, okay. But then they're like, oh, here's Curtis Blades. Oh, you lost, now you want to pull out of fights? No problem, even though it was Cyril gone. Augustus Sakai, okay. Chris Dawkins twice, and they're like, nope, here's Chris Dawkins again. Like, this dude pulls out of a lot of fights, man. Look at this. Jesus. I mean, they're not all him, but, like, a majority of them are. Um, Jesus. Um, gets knocked out by Curtis Blades, so they give him Chris Dawkins, and he gets knocked out again. So then they give him Sergey Pavlovich? Relax, UFC. What did he do to piss these guys off? I don't know, but now they're giving him jail to Almeida. He's going to be a big underdog in four straight fights. I don't know what... He did to piss them off, but apparently he pissed somebody off because he's a plus 625 underdog. Could Jailton get tired trying to push around all that weight? Uh, you know, he's not a natural heavyweight. Um, I mean, he is jacked. So, you know, he, he's a pretty big boy for 85, even though, you know, like we're used to seeing him now lately. Like, the smaller guy, but, like, 205, this man's a friggin' power horse. But, you know, heavyweight, he's not that He's not that big. Uh, he's going to be outsized. Maybe he gets tired. Maybe, you know, Shamil can pull it off. As a, a, as a, any heavyweight fight, plus 625 is a little tempting, especially when the guy who's plus 625 has, like, 45 pounds on the other guy. You never know, especially when he wants to grapple him. But I've seen Shamil get taken down, get submitted, um, I'm going to say that happens again. I'm going to say Jailton takes him down, submits him in the first round. Let's move on. Now we got uh, Gabriel Bonfim, the second Bonfim of the night. Um, and he's taking on Munir Lezez. And uh, this time, uh, Gabriel's a favorite. And I can see why. You know, Lezez, he's been a little bit hit or miss. He had that big upset win in his debut against Abdul Razak Hassan. Nobody really saw that coming. Then he lost to Worley Alves, who we were just talking about. Um, and then he went in there against Ange Lusa. Um, so he's had, he's had a mis mixed bag. And Gabriel Bonfim, yet to taste defeat. But, you know, look at it. You know, I know some of these guys have decent records. But, you know, not not like the toughest competition, especially early on. I mean, he fought a couple, he fought a couple guys at LFA that were pretty legit. Uh, but, you know, this, this is a step up. Munir Lezaz at this point is pretty tested. He's had three UFC fights, two and one, you know, uh, not even reading into the record, but just the three, you know, three fights under the UFC banner. That's, ex that's experience. Von Fiem obviously had this contender series fight. He had a nice Von Flew, and his grappling's legit. And I do think if he wins here, he's going to need to get Lezaz down and take him down. But I just feel like he's, he's people are sleeping on Lezaz a little bit. Like, I do think Lezez has a good chance to just be able to, you know, defend the takedowns, keep it on the feet. And on the feet, I do think he will. I mean, Bonfim is there to be hit, for sure. Now, could could he catch Lezez with something? Definitely. And uh, But I think he needs to get him down. I, I think this line should be a lot closer. Gun to my head, I'll pick Bonfim. I'll pick him to get him down and submit him. But honestly, like at this value, I think there's like the value, and I and you know me, I don't talk about all oh, the value. I try not to do that too much, but like it is part of betting. Like we're talking about betting, we're not just coming in for my picks. Oh, I got Jailton Almeida minus one thousand. Like yeah, but like even in that one, it's tough to say. I mean, I I will still say like there's zero value on that. Like what are you gonna get an extra friggin' ten bucks in your parlay? Like relax. Just, you know, lay off of it or fuck it. Throw a little something on Shamil. Just saying whatever. Jail Ting gets tired. 
a little too much. Like, it, it's possible. But at this line, I think plus 155, I mean, I've seen even better than that. I think Lazez, man, like, it could be another case like like the Razak fight. You know, people sleep on this guy a little bit. And I, I, I know he's not, you know, he's not a world beater. But, you know, if, if he can keep it on the feet, I think he's going to piece Bonfim up. Maybe, you know, Bonfim either got to land a bomb on the feet and knock him out or get on that get on those takedowns cuz he's not going to go strike for strike with Lazez. I, I at least would be very surprised. Uh Lazez's striking is pretty legit, especially like his volume. He's not like a huge power puncher, but he he can go three hard rounds throwing volume, you know, out voluming his opponent each time. So I am going to go Bonfim to get the takedown, get the submission, but I would not be laying damn near 2 to 1 on him. I think this line should be... I think he should be like minus 120. I really honestly want to just tell you Lazez because I'm close enough where I genuinely think I'm like 55% Bonfim. But, you know, I'll be I'll be real with you guys and not just say Lazez because I think that's the value side. I'll give you my actual pick, gun to my head. But if you're betting the fight, take Lazez or don't bet it. Now, let's move on. Next up, we got Tiago Moises taking on Mel Costa. And yeah, uh, you know, Mez Quizel, Quizel. But the commentators tend to call him Mel. I'm going to say that he's told them that it's okay. So now I'm not disrespecting him by just calling him Mel. Mel Costa, Tiago Santos. Uh, this dude just freaking looks badass. Like, uh, he remi- uh, I mean, obviously, you know. What is, I don't even want to butcher. Was it Vitalaga? I, I don't know. I got to take a dab for that terrible pronunciation. But uh, what was his name? Scott Jorgensen? Was that him? Am I just saying another random? Is that the OG fighter who had. Honestly, like, I, I know, like. As a kid. <coughs> kids are cruel. And, uh. <coughs> probably had to go through some shit. But, like. I know, and it's easy to say on the outside, look at it. I just think this shit looks so badass. Like, and Scott Jorgensen had all the tattoos, too. All right, let me just answer this question, because it's going to bother me. Yes, it is. Like, I, I think with the tats, he just looked, like, even more badass. But, uh, anyways, let's not make it about that. Striking's legit. Uh, Melly here, striking, legit. He's fighting out his shoot the box. Uh... You know, obviously, like, he's with guys who have good jiu-jitsu. I'm sure the jiu-jitsu is getting worked on. But it's not Tiago... Tiago... I almost said Tiago Santos. It's not Tiago Moises's level. Tiago Moises is a very high-level black belt. Now, yeah, when he's in there against Islam and shit, like, there is levels. But there's levels in this fight, too. Now, as far as uh, Mel here, uh, I mean, 26, like... He's got room to improve, but when you look at, you know, these fights, it's, it's not the highest level of competition, like, uh, obviously, and I mean, we've seen him, I've seen him get taken down, I've seen him get controlled, get submitted from much lesser guys than Tiago Moises, now, yeah, that was a while ago, but, you know, uh, I just feel like Tiago Moises, man, like, look at this competition, compare it, you know, yeah, he just beat Chris Del Tiago, it's not, not a world beater, but hey, he went in there and submitted him first round. Before that, Joel Alvarez. Joel Alvarez is legit. Don't let his last fight fool you. And then uh, Islam. Okay, don't need to go into detail with that. He beat the tar out of Alexander Hernandez. I'm not saying that's like an end-all, be-all, but hey, you know, good fight. Beat Bobby Green. Okay, did I think he win that fight, won that fight? No, but hey, it was close enough to make it a bad decision, so I'll give it to you. Um beat Michael Johnson in a fight where he didn't, you know, land a damn strike. He got destroyed. Like, he was getting decimated. And then just pulls, like, pulls, not even, like, guard. He just pulls, like, an ankle lock. Pulls straight ankle, like, from... It was insane. You never... Michael Johnson is the greatest fighter, the greatest worst fighter of all time. And I know that he's tired of the joke... I know, we're all tired of the joke. We all have, like, a different variation of that same joke. But I will say it till the end of time. I'm sorry. And I'm no disrespect, Michael Johnson. But it's he, he's so good and, and somehow finds ways to lose so often. 
I don't know what, why. It's so crazy. But let's get back to the topic at hand. You know, Tiago, Moises, I mean, Demira is Magula, Wagner Rocha even. I mean, obviously that was a grappling match, but like, that's good experience. But Neil Dariush, I saw Wagner in person roll one time. Uh, wow, I can't. I'm, I'm, I'm blanking on who he was rolling in this main event for fight to win. Uh, oh my God. Wow. JT Torres, and he lost. It was a close fight. A lot of people thought, said it was boring, but, you know, I respected it. It was the highest level. I actually have a person, or, you know, basically my little brother is really close with Robert Wiley here, um, who's actually a beast. That's not a terrible loss, but Moises is a beast. His jujitsu is very high level. His takedowns aren't great, but I think they're good enough to get Mel Costa down. Tiago Moises going to be at a little bit of a striking disadvantage on the feet, but I have seen his striking has been getting better over his last couple fights. Now, I know that uh, Joel Alvarez fight wasn't good, but, you know, Joel Alvarez, he, he ain't no slouch. And at lightweight, that man is a freaking monster So, as far as size. So, um, you know, he can, I think it can be a tough fight for a lot of guys. Um, I got Tiago Moises. Um, I just feel like this is a tough fight to step up and take. Uh, you know, I mean, coming off, I mean, at least he had a couple fights at LFA. Fought a couple decent guys, went one and one, but... You know, uh, before then, it's just this is just a massive step up in general, and I think Moises gets him down and submits him. I think there's gonna be a decent amount of finishes on this card. Speaking of which, we got next up Gregory Rodriguez taking on Bruno Ferreira, and uh, Gregory a big favorite, and I, I'll tell you why. I mean, Bruno Ferreira undefeated for a reason. He's dangerous. His jujitsu's good, but he wants to get on top of you and submit you, or get on or really get on top of you and just smash you. Uh, I mean, he's got a, a, a mixture. You know, he got a couple subs in there, but he mainly wants to get on top of you. His ground and pound's vicious. He's called the Hulk for a reason. Uh, but I just feel like Gregor Rodriguez's striking's better, his wrestling's better, and his jiu is very high level too. And he's fought the much better competition. And yeah, we see him get tired sometimes, but he'll fight through it. And we saw him fight with his face hanging off. Uh, the dude's... Tough as nails, clearly. And I know every cage fighter's tough. But amongst tough guys, Greg Rodriguez is very, very fucking tough. Take a dab for dropping an F-bomb and getting demonetized. Not that it matters in my baby channel. But it, now I'm going to make five cents instead of ten. JK, I didn't even sign my uh, account up for uh, monetization. I'm just used to hearing like Bisping or some big... YouTuber talk about that in the first five minutes and we are at minute 27 you know that's one thing that the dabs will do time flies but overall I think Greg Rodriguez he can be able to get, <laughs> mix in takedowns <coughs> Bruno's a beast on the ground but he's a beast on the ground when he's on top um, I'm gonna go Greg Rodriguez uh, I think he can mix in some takedowns I think he can knock him out of the feet I think if it goes through rounds it's definitely gonna be the one who can just outwork him. <clears throat> Give me Gregory Rodriguez all day. He's one of my more confident fighters in the card. And I know sometimes he fights a little reckless. He's a tough guy to be super confident in at that line and all that. But, um, you know, a lot of the ones, I mean, there's some big favorites on this card. Gee, if, you're, if you're a parlay guy, you're going to have to fucking eat some chalk. But next up, we got Mauricio Shogun Hua, the legend, taking on Io Pateria. Um, a guy that I w went pretty hard when I put a decent amount of money on Nikolai. And I'm not even going to say that last name. <laughs> I don't even feel like hearing it in the comments. So, uh, Big Nikolai, I'll call him. Um, uh, <laughs> sorry, that got me all off my train of thought. But uh, did exactly what I thought he would do. Porteria, he's quick, he's explosive. But he doesn't have a great gas tank. He really doesn't. I just don't think he's going to need it here. Shogun, not only is he 41, but he's 58 in fight years. He's been fighting the best of the best. for so. I mean, he fought Mark Coleman, I mean, 18 years ago or 17 years ago. I mean, geez, what more do you have to say? Uh, it's Poteri all day. I'm not going to give the long breakdown. It just, 
Uh, he also announces retirement before the fight. I get he's only minus 200 because Poteria, they, they picked a guy. And uh, d- don't get me wrong. I, I guess I just made it sound like I'm more confident in Poteria than Gregor Rodriguez or, you know, Jailton Almeida. No, obviously, like, he's not my most confident play on the card. And I'm not going to bet this because Poteria is somebody I am looking to fade, not bet. And it's I'm I'm actually happy that the UFC did try to try to find a winnable fight for Shogun. And again, this is coming from a Shogun fan, man. Like Shogun is an OG and deserves the most respect. But it's 2023. This it's just this ain't a sport for old men. And he's not old in real life, but he's old for okay. It's not it's not a sport to fight, to do for more than ten years. Let alone 20. Over 10 years, you're going to start seeing... I mean, okay, yeah, there's outliers. And obviously, anybody who's been a champion could, should be considered an outlier. But it's just... We've already seen it. He hasn't been looking great. He's slowing down. I mean, could he catch Poteria? Yes, because Poteria doesn't have good cardio himself. He's wild. He's beaten up on guys... That were very low level, uh, you know. Like that's why I bet heavily against him like, on, on a guy Nikolai that a lot of people call. You know, a lot of people try to fade him, but I knew he was gonna beat up Eeyore here. Unfortunately, though, Rua's got the the age and the fact that he re- and we'll be talking about somebody up there in age too, even older that I'm gonna be uh, actually picking. Spoiler alert. But it's different, man. It's just different. Because Rua's been fighting at the... He's, Hua has been fighting... God, I just sounded like a casual there. But, uh, you know, more like an American. But uh, butchering that. But he's just been fighting at the highest level for too long. He's taking too much damage. His fight style also... like Whereas this other guy we're going to be talking about can get in there and, and, and sometimes now it's not always necessary necessarily true lately but typical over the course of his career you know he's not taking the damage that who is whereas you know who was now he's taking some damage but who was just like every fight he made a living off like just brawling and then also in the spot you hear about the legendary spars he was having so it's like what what was it like him and silva him and vanderlei uh like Fought like legit had a fight for a puppy or something like that. Wasn't that him and uh, Vanderlei? I don't know. I'm pulling that out of the archive, so it could be wrong. But you know, uh, I just feel like Poteria. He's just gonna be younger, quicker, more and left in the tank. But you know, he's a guy who this gonna be probably the only fight I pick him in in the UFC. I'm not trying to disrespect him. It's just you know, one dimensional. So, so far, and I, I don't like to. I, sometimes it's kind of annoying to me when these guys like one and zero, one and zero, one and one, zero and zero, two and two, zero and zero, seventeen and seventeen, three and two, three and two, five and five, one and six, three and two, one and two, zero and zero. When he's already had ten fights, five and six, zero and zero again, one and nine, seventeen and eighteen, zero and zero. When he's had fifteen fights, zero and three. Like, oh my God, a winning record. Wow! And you look at this guy, and he also is fighting only guys who... It, this dude is literally not... Had, this is His Contender Series win was quite literally the only good win he's ever had. And it was another guy who beat up a lot of bums. Like He's really beat two guys who even on paper seem good. And he... Uh, and even they beat, are like similar to him. So it's, it's a rabbit hole that I've gone on a long time ago. I said I was going to be make this quick, but I honestly am just like, okay, let me not make it seem like this is a lock because it's not. This is a 41-year-old already retired guy who should have retired like seven years ago. But respect, he was still getting wins. So again, like, you know, hey, get it in. Make that money. You're a legend. But, and would still to this day beat the tar out of me. All right, we put all that out there. Potera, Potera by knockout. I, but I would love to see who will get it done one more time. Next up, we got Paul Craig taking on Johnny Walker. And uh, 
man, this is a crazy fight. You got one guy, Paul, uh, Paul Craig, who, you know, submitted one of the guys fighting for the belt in the main event on this card. Uh, you know, broke his arm, and, but also loses to, you know, I mean, he's got some low-level loss. But, but, I mean, for the most part, he's fought tough guys. I mean, for the, most of his losses aren't, aren't that bad. Uh, Jimmy Crew, Alonzo Minifield, Volkan Uzdemir, Khalil Roundtree, a little dicey, but Tyson Pedroca, you know, he's, he fought tough guys. He's also got wins over Ankalaev, the only loss that dude's got. It was a triangle with a second left in the fight, hashtag sketchy. But he beat, he triangled Kennedy and, Zek, and Zechaku. Uh, <clears throat> he actually, <laughs> speaking of Hua, uh, beat him and then had a, what? Like, I mean, I don't know. That fight, the draw, they're, they're kind of crazy. But, yeah, Hua did tap the strikes. Kind of crazy. Submitted uh, Nikita Krylov. You know, like, this dude's jiu-jitsu, super high level. The problem is he don't have any takedowns, man. His takedowns are bad. He's got to, like, pull guard, get the clinch, try to just... Typically, he's resorting to pulling guard, and I—I I mean, I guess Johnny Walker, a guy who doesn't have the greatest fight IQ, could that happen? Yeah, but I feel like I don't know. We've seen he's honestly taking a lot less risks now. Uh, I mean, Jamal Hill still—I mean, decimated him, but you know, he had a good good win over Ian Kutalaba, and the Thiago Santos fight—he was just so like he didn't want to put, he didn't want to take any risks. And it just ended up kind of biting him in the ass. He just didn't do anything. Uh, I think that low-risk style that he's trying to work on, or not even low, but, I mean, that has been lately. But even with him getting that finish in the last one, let me let my cat out before he goes nuts. Go ahead. Uh, just a closed door bothers him. But I just feel like Johnny Craig, or Johnny Craig, Johnny Walker, I sound like Johnny Bravo or something. He's just going to be... Too, it's not even that his takedown defense is so good. It's just Paul Craig's takedowns are bad. And Johnny Walker is a massive man. Fast, athletic, strong. I just don't see Paul Craig being able to take him down. Um, I think Johnny Walker, if he wants to go nuts, as long as he doesn't just fall into the guard of Paul Craig, he's going to win this fight. Uh, if he wants to like play that game plan he did with Thiago Santos, he can pop shot his way to an easy win. It's just going to be a matter of him not doing something stupid. So, I do like Johnny Walker this week. Uh, I just feel like he's really got to do something dumb to lose this fight. He is a guy who injured himself and couldn't fight for like, what, a year? Because he was doing the worm in his post-fight celebration. So, you know, take that for what you will. But, you know. Next up, I'm going to take uh, Johnny Walker, though, by knockout. Next up. Jessica draws Lauren Murphy. Kind of, uh, kind of a weird fight here, but we got Jessica draws big favorite. Lauren Murphy coming off that win over Misha Tate. Uh, weird win. Uh, some people didn't agree, but uh, actually, I, I feel like most people thought she won that fight. There were some people like, "Oh, it's like, come on, bro, like she won," but. A lot of people didn't think she beat uh, Joanne Wood or Andrea Lee. But, uh, you know, she finds herself in these close fights. And, you know, she's tough. She's, like, she doesn't get finished. And Jessica Andrade, though, if anybody could finish you, it would be Andrade. This girl is a freaking tank. John Dodson of the women's division. Uh, I always say this, but, you know, like, just picks girls up, slams them. I think she can take Lauren down. I think she can piece her up on the feet. She's got the better striking. Obviously, much more power. Uh, she don't always have the greatest gas tank, but I think she should, you know, at this point, I feel like unless she goes absolutely nuts and gasses out, I, I don't really see Lauren Murphy winning this fight. I just feel like Jessica Andrade has her covered everywhere. Yeah, Murphy does have a way of just coming in good shape, tough, uh, just making the fights close, but I just feel like Andrade is going to be a little too much for her. I'm going to go Andrade, keep this short and sweet. I just feel like she can piece her up on the feet. She could catch her with something, knock her out, be the first one to do it. Or she could even take her down, like ground and pound or control her. Um, Lauren Murphy's only hope is she gets her tired, but do I want to rely on a 39-year-old flyweight to 
whose like path to victory is tiring out her 31 year old opponent not really it's not even about the gender it's the 39 at uh, as a 125 pound fighter that's just up there when speed and athleticism is so huge and there's going to be huge advantages on the Andrade side so give me Andrade I'm going to take her by decision though I don't think she'll finish her but it's possible <coughs> and let's move on another great fight Gilbert Burns by, uh, taking on Neil Magny um, and uh, man I'm not going to lie I think Bur- I'm just going to come right out and spoiler alert I think Gilbert Burns bounces back, and I think I love Neil Magny, but I think this is a tough. This could be a tough matchup for him, man. Neil Magny is the type of guy who sometimes he just comes in there and just looks like a fucking world beater. But uh, you know, had a great win over D Rod. Um, the Shavkat fight was not good. Just got out wrestled and then gets choked out in the second round. Kiesa just controlled him the whole time. Ponzinibbio, that that was kind of a weird knockout, but. You know, pieced him up. RDA Ted just kind of ragdolled him, and then Lorenz Larkin. Oh, that was a beating. That was that was a savage beating. I just feel like Burns, man. Like this is a good matchup for him because Magny doesn't have great takedown defense. Uh, Burns should be able to take him down. And if anybody in the division who can't, if like Burns doesn't have the greatest wrestling, especially for a guy who's damn near damn fast and, and explosive. He's not like a super high level wrestler, you know. He's not Usman or Colby, you know. Like his, his wrestling's not super high level to where he can just take all these guys down and implement his strength, which is that jujitsu. So he ends up just striking, and his striking's good. But like, I don't know, man. Uh, like I think this is a fight where he should definitely get go back to that Wonder Boy game plan. Just take him down. Uh, I mean, that was how he got his last win. He st- stood up with Hamzat in this whole fight in that one. He mixed in a couple, you know, half shots, but it was, I feel like it was mostly he kind of went in there knowing you know, I'm, I'm going to just bang with this dude. Uh, I don't think you should do that with Neil because Neil does have a good way of just like, if you if you want to strike with him, like just keeping you at that 80-inch reach, he's going to have a 9-inch re- uh, reach advantage, and he is good at using it. He's got great cardio and something that Burns doesn't really... I wouldn't say he has great cardio. He's got enough to go three, but he gets tired for sure. <coughs> but I think he'll be good to give a hard three. I think he can mix in the takedowns, and I think he'll find a submission. I'm actually going to go Gilbert Burns by submission. Uh, just really hope he doesn't go in there and have try to have a kickboxing match with Neil Magny. That 80-inch reach, Magny's got good pace, good pressure. Um, and... Uh, I think he could get Burns tired. But outside of that, I really feel like Burns, you know, obviously going to have a power advantage, a, a wrestling advantage, and, and the jiu-jitsu majorly. So if he gets Magny down, I think that'll be a submission for him. Bounce back in on the winning path again. And let's get into the first title fight of the card. Appreciate you watching this far. Make sure you leave a like, comment, sub, all that good stuff. Appreciate you. And we got the fourth fight between Davison Figueredo and Brandon Moreno. Uh, pretty crazy. The first fight, obviously, um, you know, some people like to just give it to Figgy because, you know, t- if it wasn't for the, the point deduction, he, he would have won the fight. But, hey, man, obviously the rules are there for a reason. And uh, I think it was the eye pokes. He might have had, like, a nut shot and, like, an eye poke or two. I can't remember. I, I want to say it was two eye pokes. But I, I can't really remember. That was three of their fights ago. Um, second fight, you could tell the weight cut really bothered him. Uh, he, I mean, he's a huge 125er. Uh, Moreno doesn't cut a ton of weight. Uh, even though he's the taller guy, I he just got a lot of more muscle on him. Uh, he's looking like the weight cut is affecting him again. And that second fight, we saw him come in affected. And Moreno choked him out easily. And... The third fight, uh, Moreno was winning a lot of those rounds, but the knockdowns for Figgy were stealing him. And, uh, you know, I just feel like Moreno, we're seeing him. He's he, he's obviously, you know, had a fight since then. 
He knocked out Kai Kara with that, uh, lip, you know, it was that, uh, I think it was a switch kick to the body, but it might have just been a lead leg roundhouse. Um, so obviously he's had, you know, he's had a fight since then, whereas Figgy hasn't fought in a year. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, uh, it'll be what, a year to the day or, uh, one, you know, one less, one less day or something maybe. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Obviously, Moreno's been more active. It's also, I don't like that Figgy, uh, he's not at fight ready for this camp. He fought uh, with fight ready for that last fight. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that definitely helped him. He, he, you, you saw his wrestling look sharp. I don't think it's going to be a wrestling match. I think they're going to mostly strike. But I do like, uh, you know, I do like him being at fight ready. So him just training, you know, at home, I, I, at Team Figgy, I, I don't love that, and I, I don't like how friggin' bad he looks early on in the week, and that weight cut, man, that weight cut, it looks like it's, I mean, he never looks good, but I think this is gonna be a bad one, uh, and that's just enough in a fight where it's so close, these guys have fought three times, a tie, uh, and then a win on both sides, something like that gives me the edge, and also, Figgy's, you know, he's 35, but at flyweight, that is a little up there, and especially when you mix in these massive weight cuts, I'm leaning Moreno. I'm going to go Brandon Moreno. I just feel like the fight, these guys are so close. They're clearly the two best guys in the division. And, uh, I mean, Pantoja deserves a shot. I'd like to see that. But these two guys are so evenly matched. And one guy just, he's a little younger. He's a little fresher. Not just younger age-wise, but younger, you know, uh, in fight terms and fight years and I'm going to go Moreno. It also just seems like, I don't know, man. I think Figgy, he's been talking about going up. I think he's done with the weight cut. I think he wants money fight. And Moreno is just like, he's just having a good time. He's enjoying it. Little things like that in such a close fight. I'm on Moreno this week. And, uh, you know, um, definitely like him, especially even at these odds. But if you got him as an underdog, yeah. Well, let's go. Let's go. Team Moreno this week. I do like Figgy. I like that, you know, he tried to... He, you know, it's tough when you don't speak English. It's, it just is. It's just a disadvantage. Uh, like, to, Charles Oliveira's done it, though. But, uh, <coughs> you know, I like Figgy style, but I like Moreno, too. They're, you know, in, in complete opposite ways. They're, I like both of them. But I am going to go Moreno. I think he'll, uh, I think he's going to find another submission, man. I, I, I think Figgy, uh, these weight cuts are catching up to him. I think this is going to be his last fight at flyweight. I think Brandon Moreno gets another rear naked choke. And then uh, probably late, though, later than that second fight was. Um, and uh, Moreno gets the choke later on in the fight. Um, so let me get Brandon Moreno by sub. And let's move on to the main event. Main event, I gave a bit of a spoiler earlier. And yes, I'm going with the underdog. I get why he's the underdog. You know, I mean, uh, we were talking a little bit about age on this card. And... He's like the third oldest fighter in the UFC. He's 43. Um, he's he's taking some damage too. Not like Shogun Hua has, but he's taking damage clearly. <clears throat> he's been in some wars. He's been knocked out. And a lot of these wins, he gets rocked. He's got to come back. Um, I mean, that year he fights, so insane. And I mean, we still, yeah, they, he took a lot of damage in that fight. So I, I, I hope, you know, it's going to be like the other times we've seen him take damage and he comes right back and looks himself. But, you know, we haven't seen that yet. But I just feel like, man, he's trained with Alex Pereira. That, that you know, that that's definitely a little bonus there uh, on top of what we are. Because obviously at this point we know who the hell Glover is. Like, he's his finished product. You know, I do love little bonuses. Like, you know, he's clearly very motivated. I've seen him. He's in great shape. He's training with Alex Pereira. He's been waiting for an opportunity. Uh, but I, I get people who, who like the, you know, Jamal Hill. He's on the come up, whereas Glover, he is up there. He's up there, man. One of the oldest in the UFC. But this is heavyweight, or light heavyweight. But, you know, still, uh, it's about the size of them. And, you know, obviously these are big boys. So you can get away with it a little bit more. But Jamal Hill obviously hasn't fought the guys Glover has. But he's had some good wins. Knocking out Tiago Santos. Knocking out Johnny Walker. Knocking out Jimmy Crude. He obviously had that loss to Paul Craig. Um, knocked out OSP. I mean, he's definitely a knockout artist. And those are some good wins. But I just feel like 
Glover, especially as an underdog, man. Like, you can give me underdog odds on Glover these days. Like, I'm just going to take it, man. This dude is a dog. He's a dog. He, he, he's going to fight for your money. His jiu-jitsu, world class. His wrestling, pretty damn good. Yeah, he gets hurt. I I don't even know if you can say his chin. It's just toughness, man. This dude gets he gets rocked. It's not like his chin's crazy. Like you'll see him get dropped, knees buckled, but then he'll just get in on those legs, take you down, then pound you out. The Yeary fight, man, that was so nuts. I was screaming at my TV because I love Glover. I don't dislike Yeary, but man, I wanted to see old man get her done again. But uh, Glover, man, he's he's still a tank, man. He's a beast and. I think he can weather the storm. Uh, not that I think this fight's going to go very long. I think it'll... I'm, I'm thinking like a second or third round TKO for Glover or a sub. But I think he's going to get Jamal Hill down. Uh, and I think that ground and pound... I think he'll most likely... It's going to be uh, a, a, a submission, rear naked choke. I think Glover gets him down. Starts raining some shots on him. I'm sure Hill will rock him at least once. But Glover will get him down. The ground and pound will come in. Hill's tough and he's got a chin, but he's going to turn away. He's going to give up that back. And uh, I think Glover locks in another rear naked choke. So give me Glover. Let's ride the Glover train one more time. And new. Obviously, it would be and new for either. Error. Don't they say like and? Am I crazy? Do they say and now or something like Don't they say, why am I thinking they say something different when it's like there's not a belt holder? So weird. So weird what they did. But, you know, do I love that it's a title fight? Eh, whatever. Cool. Let somebody get paid. You know, that, it is what it is. But I, Dana should, I didn't even think that fight between Uncle Live and Jan was that bad. I didn't think it was a bad fight. You saw like some crazy you know, leg kicks, and then you saw Uncle Live mixing the wrestling. He did what he had to do. His legs were compromised, and he was just trying to win a title fight. I didn't think it deserved to get shit on as hard as it did, but it is what it is. It's a different story for a different day. We are running long, but this is 15 fights. Um, so, run through my picks one more time. I'll do a short video right before the fights, probably Friday night, uh, giving all my bets, but I got Glover, um, I'm going to take him by sub. I got Brandon Moreno by sub. I got Gilbert Burns by sub. Wow, I'm picking a lot of submissions. I got Jessica Andrade by knockout. Johnny Walker by knockout. Uh, or no, J Jessica Andrade by decision. I'm sorry. Um, Johnny Walker. And knockout's possible, but no, I'm going to go with decision. Johnny Walker by knockout. Eo Pateria by knockout. Gregory Rodriguez by sub. Mm, I'm torn between knockout or sub. I'm going to actually say by knockout. TKO on the ground. Uh... Tiago Moises by sub. Damn, I'm seeing a lot of finishes on this card. I didn't even realize that. Bonfim by sub. Uh, but the, you know, Lizez, live dog for sure. Jailton Almeida by sub. Um, first round. Terrence McKinney. Or, yeah, Terrence McKinney I'm leaning, but I don't know the prop. I, I, I'll say submission. Bonfim has been submitted a couple times. But uh, I'm going to go Worley Alves, TKO. Jose Nunez. Yeah, decision and uh, Cody Stammen decision and Marcos I'm going to say TKO on the ground that is a lot of finishes I'm picking like 12 finishes that is like a ton of finishes because you know sometimes I like to play with decision props but I'm feeling the finishes on Saturday knock on wood so I don't jinx it appreciate y'all watching this is a longer video but 15 fights glad to be back y'all again appreciate all the people who Sent me some congrats over the engagement. Uh, and just everybody riding with me. Watching the videos. Hanging out. Appreciate you guys. And I will be back for the next fights. I got a lot of dope fights to start this year off. Can't wait. I will see you for the next one. Win some money. Enjoy the fights. Come hang out on Saturday. I'll be live on Twitch for the fights. Peace.